Dollar General. <laughs> it's that white cream that ruined my ass. Store, get it, you go to the Dollar Store and get it for a buck. <laughs> okay, Dad, so get to your story. What did you call about? All right. Then, then shut up. I, I was silent. I have a lot of hell about me and your mama getting divorced. I've had more people write me, you need to go back to Tina. You need to get back with your wife. They need to suck my fucking dick. <laughs> if anybody out there thinks that I need to go back with Tina, I want you to make like a wheel, roll over here, and kiss my fucking ass. So where's your story going to begin at? He means that in a nice way. All right, my story is going to begin. Oh, if I go back to the beginning, two hours ain't long enough. Well, so, we're, mm. begin it where you want. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's begin with what uh, in Columbia. Tina I mean, you going was away always back. crazy. Tina was always crazy. <clears throat> Tina would, she was so jealous of my mother that she would just cut my mom out for no reason, and my mom was sick. Uh, she got so mad one time that while I was working, she took the car and went to the bus station, got on the bus, come back to Charleston, and I found out two days later where my motherfucking car was. Because she had just come back to Charleston. But she was crazy. She was always on some kind of goddamn <clears throat> medication. She was more than bipolar. I think she had she had um, multiple. But anyway, she wanted to come back to Charleston so fucking bad <clears throat> that our trailer burned down under yeah, mysterious yeah. reasons. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I never told you about that, Isaac. She burned our trailer down. I literally woke up, the house on fire. She's out there in the yard going, my kids are dead. My kids are dead. My kids are dead. What? I jumped now, out of bed, no me. clothes on. No clothes. I'm talking. No clothes on. I grabbed each kid, threw them out the fucking door. That was the first time I saw that. And the fire was like, and the fire was like licking my ass, you know. But kids, well, they really don't know what started the fire. But she told me years later what started the fire. The fire Do what? She told me years later what started the fire, but I'm not going to say that. No, we can't say because, you know, we really can't prove it. So, but anyway, let's get back to the story. <clears throat> so, my mom died, and everything that my mother left me, Tina either broke or disappeared. She wanted me to have nothing to do with anything that belonged to my mom. Tina would literally take pots and pans <clears throat> and go out in the street and put them in the street so cars would run over them. And I'm going, you can't do that shit. You know, you're going to get in fucking trouble. <clears throat> Still, she go, she worked for Walmart and stole them blind. And they found a quarter of pirate. <clears throat> she went to a grocery store and stole a little thick and that thing. And they arrested her. She went to jail. So I said, fuck it. Let's just move back to Charles. <clears throat> Tina has never been right. When Michael was a baby, uh, he was standing in the kitchen and somehow or another a pot of hot tea went all over him and burned his skin up. I mean, his skin was melting off his stomach. What happened, Tina? I don't know. The pot just fell. Pot don't just fall. <clears throat> am, I, am I losing track here somewhere, Michael? No, no, you're, you're explaining her her level of insanity. She was so bad that that we fought all the time. And she wouldn't work. She wouldn't do nothing. It's just bitch and complain and moan and groan about everything. If I didn't do exactly what she wanted, it was hell to pay. The only reason I, I stayed with her so long was because of my kids. I'm a big believer when you got small kids, you stay, regardless of whether you're happy or not, you stay in that marriage until the kids are old enough to do for their own. <clears throat> now, saying that, we were 
Michael started fucking filming me. I just lied. I know I'm crazy. Goddamn. But she got to the point where she was jealous of the fans. She was jealous of uh, they were still present. And she felt like they she was doing her stuff. Not why. <laughs> So, so she did get stuff. Mm. Well, this kept on, and I was having problems with my daughter because she's fucked up in the head. And Jennifer liked men more than she liked her kids. So DSS stepped in, took the kids away from her, and gave them to me and Tina. Mm. It, it went on like that for like three months. And Tina was just getting worse and worse and worse. Tina would 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 call DSF and lie about me, saying I was doing this and I was doing that. And I'm like, hey man, you know, what can I say? So we're under investigation, you know, we got I'm having to go to anger management classes. I'm having to go to class on how to raise children with ADHD, because we're talking to poor grand boys. Excuse me, I got a cold, so I'm coughing a little bit. But one night, she came home from work, and I was on the computer like I always am, and she started, you're fucking that bitch. You're fucking this one. You're fucking that one. I said, Tina, these ladies live way over here, and two of them are guys. I'm not fucking them. Well, you're fucking them women. I said, what am I doing, taking my dick out and throwing it on the keyboard? That's the closest I can come to fucking them. Well, one thing and led so, to another. She, she took all the kids' social security cards and read them in half. She took their Medicaid cards, cut them in half. She took my birth certificate, some other stuff I had, and burned them outside. She took pictures right, right. and threw them in the street, like glass, and just threw them in the middle of the road, let them shatter. So Michael grabs the camera. He's filming all this because she has fucking lost it. So <clears throat> I say, look here. I'm going to a hotel for the night. Bridget, take the boys to McDonald's, feed them, get them out of the situation. <clears throat> so I went, and I spent the night in the hotel. The next morning, I, she wasn't there when I went back. She had stayed with the, where she was working. And I, I got in touch with her. I said, look here. Let the ship blow over. We'll sit down. We'll talk. You know, we'll see if we can work this thing out. Fuck you, you son of a bitch. I don't want to ever be with you no more. In the meantime, see, the real thing is, this. something you forgot, is when you were arguing, she pulled out a bag that was already packed in her trunk with a label on it for New York, as if she was all she, all she wanted to do was leave you so she could move to New York with Kim. That was the whole reason she started all this. Yeah. She did what she wanted to be with her with our other daughter in New York. <clears throat> she calls DSS. She tells them that she tells them that uh that I'm playing them for a fool and that I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Well, the next morning, DSS called me. He said, "Charlie, what the hell's going on?" I tell him. He come out to the house. <clears throat> I carried me outside. I told him what happened. He called Michael and Bridget outside. They told him what happened. He called the boys outside. They told me what happened. In the meantime, I didn't notice it was on the back of my car. She wrote, she took a key and she scratched. He'll fuck anything with a pussy. And DSS looked at that. And he said, Charlie, I want some paint covering that right now. I don't want the boys to see this. I said, Well, now what are we going? To? I said, Now what do we do? He said, Well, number one, Tina can no longer be around the boys. She's got an order a judgment against her now to stay away from these boys. I said, okay, that can happen. I said, what next? I said, Cause I'm, you know, we're, we're fighting over custody. He said, well, I'm going to be honest with you, Charlie. I know who you are. You're the angry grandpa. And I just can't see the courts giving you the custody of four boys. So I said, well, what do I need to do? And I was ready to get... You know, I, was, I even told my man, I, you cannot film me anymore because I cannot lose these boys. And Tia says, no, we're not telling like that. We're, we're saying 
you know, where are the boys when, when, when Mike's filming you? I said, I, Mike, where are the boys? And he says, well, they're, they're at the playground or they're at the neighbor's house. That Mike wasn't filming, them when, filming me when they were in the house. <clears throat> he said, well, I'll, I'll investigate. DSS to nine people, all because of what he was doing, right? Took nine people. They said, I told them one day in a room with nine computers, they watched every video that, was, that Michael made. And I said, I am in fucking trouble. I am going to lose these boys. I love my grandsons. And Mike was like, Dad, we can't lose the boys. You know, I love these boys. So one thing led to another, and about two months ago, here I am. I, I'm going out there. I'm going to court. So custody for four boys. Went to went for the judge. The judge carried me back to the room, and we told which I really, I'm not at liberty to say what he said. But it ended up with the judge giving me custody of all four boys with a court order that Tina could no longer be around the boys unsupervised. Ever. That's the way that went down. So come out of court. I got in touch with Tina, and I told her what the judge said. She was like, well, fuck you. You did this on purpose. You paid them to do that. You're a piece of shit. You're garbage. She's telling all her friends. She's telling all our friends. Telling everybody that I'm that I'm a piece of shit, that I was fucking over her. That she went as far as when I was in New York back in August, uh, oh. last August or August. Can you hear me? You what? That, oh, oh I yeah, was we're here. It got so far as to the point where when I was back, when I was in New York a couple of August ago, she made flyers with that picture printed up, put his number, his address, and said that he likes to fuck you know, girls that he meets on the internet, and she started handing them around and hanging them up around town. Are you serious? Yeah, uh, 100%, yeah, no. dude. I couldn't believe it. I had my sister call and light into her. She goes, I didn't do it, but we stacked and showed us the pictures of it. What? She went all over, she went all over Charleston putting up those, uh, putting up those uh, flyers. <clears throat> so, I said, fine, I'm divorcing your ass. So, she said, well, Look in the paper. Uncontested divorce, hundred and fifty dollars. I said, You're not gonna fight me? She said, Fuck you, I won't rid of you. So I went to this lady and I paid her hundred and fifty bucks. She gave me a bunch of paperwork. I went and got Tina, went to the courthouse, filled it out, went upstairs, had them served. Went back downstairs, got more papers, had a sticker girl upstairs, had them served. Got divorced within thirty days. And I told her, I said, if you can straighten your ass out, I'll let you see the boys. Fuck you. I don't want to see the little bastards. What? Them your grandsons. Wow. Oh, fuck you. They're not mine. That's fucked One up. Thing another, and here she is. She's, she's calling the police, telling them I'm doing things here. I was doing things at the house and that I wasn't doing. Police were coming to my house. She was calling DSS saying I was molesting my goddamn grandson. Never had my grandson laughed at my papa? Hell no. She was doing everything she could to get these boys taken away from me and put in a foster home. And baby, when it comes to my grandboys, I will fight you tooth and nail. So after the divorce, everything was final. I, I bought her a car because she didn't have transportation. I went and I bought her a goddamn car. I paid $3,000 for it. Kept it on my name, and I kept the insurance on my name, so she wouldn't have to worry about that either. <clears throat> Two months after buying her the car, she decided she needed some money, so she went to a Title Max and 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 signed my name and got a loan. She never paid a payment. Two months later, the people called me, Mr. Green. When are you gonna pay this payment? What payment? Uh, you and your wife uh, uh, took out a loan on, on that car, and we're going to take the car, but you owe us money. I said, I don't owe you a damn thing. They said, Mr. Green, what you showed since you didn't even make the first payment was that you meant to defraud us. So you are going to pay us. So I had to pay them 500 bucks. Must give them the goddamn. I know. I went to pay the payments up on the car. See, the, biggest the, car thing, the biggest thing was like, I remember, I remember the day that happened. The day that happened, 
she was also telling us that she needed us to pay her rent and her life. Remember that? We had a big pool of money sitting on the kitchen table uh, trying to count out how much to, okay, you got this it's for your rent, this is for your life, this is for your electricity, yep. and this is for that fucking car. And she took it, and she didn't even say thank you for it. She took the money, left, and I didn't see her again for another two months. Wow. And then, and then so anyway, they, they took the car and everything, because she didn't pay those payments either. So Michael... She was having problems, no place to stay. Michael said, sorry, Mom. Mike took her to uh, one of these hotels and paid her rent every motherfucking week. He paid her $1,000 a month for like three or four months so she'd have a place to stay. Here she is getting a good paycheck. Where's her money going? So then she moved in with, with Jennifer. Caused so many problems and then got back to Michael. And Michael said, Mom, I can't help you this time. I, I have my own bills to pay. <clears throat> so she moved in with one of her, uh, her, I guess, her boyfriend. And she doesn't have two or three boyfriends. None of them worth fun. But this particular boyfriend uh, was a fucking drug head. He, he, was, he was a crackhead. You know, she's still to, to, talk about one of the pre- to talk about one of the previous boyfriends, Remember Gerald? We, I, these fans might remember Gerald because I talked about him on the video. Uh, she she was, was so over. Over, He was good. And she was so convinced because she, like, smothered him. She showed up at his job with food. Let's have a picnic. She showed up, like, she was calling him. He was at the hospital. His son was dying. And she shows up at the hospital. She wants to see him. He's like, no, I'm going through something right now. So he breaks up with her. And after that, she was so convinced that me and Dad and Jennifer hired this guy just so we could fuck with her life that we paid some dude to date her. Are you serious? Her, no, that's like, true. Like, that, that's true. Like, why would why would I do that? Why would I hire somebody to date you to fuck with? That's you? like delusional, I I, dude. I know I pranked Dad, she but it's all over that day. She <clears> called <throat> me that afternoon because you sons of bitches. Y'all, y'all ruined my relationship with Gerald. Y'all, y'all, what the relationship? Y'all hired him. Y'all fucked me. Y'all fucked me. I said, yeah, I we don't care about you. We don't care about you. But anyway, she got with this other dude, and <clears throat> the man ain't got no job. She's paying the goddamn bills. He's taking her money and going to buy and crack. She comes over from work, and there he is over, over the sink with a fucking needle out of his arm. Passed out, not breathing. I find this out. I tell her, you know, when Jennifer goes over there, she can't take the boys over there no more. Because I don't want this crack in around my boys. Well, a few weeks ago, I went to now, this is what Jennifer and this whole and discussion. This this part right here is why we're talking about it today. Okay. Jennifer is with a guy now that's a stand-up motherfucker. He's taking these kids as his own. They still live with me. But he wants to be their daddy. He wants to marry Jenny. Jenny's doing fantastic. Jenny's got a job. Jenny goes to work every day. Jenny ain't got no license. So, and she has to go like 40, 50 miles to work. What does she do? She rides a fucking moped in the fucking rain, in the cold, whatever. Jennifer's up at 5 o'clock taking her milk moped and going to work. And coming home at 6 o'clock at night. So, Jennifer has really straightened up and surprised me. I never thought it would happen. It's like a miracle, you know. I never thought it would ever happen. <clears throat> so, I say, okay, this is coming up. I'm going to let you take the boys home this weekend, Jenny. So, I tell Tina, I'm going to bring them to the hotel, go pick up Jenny, take them home so the boys can spend the weekend with their mama. She says, no problem. Two hours later, Derek will call me, Dad, where are my boys? Where are my boys, Dad? You you know, you promised me they were going to be here. I said, well, Jenny, your mama's supposed to be on the way to get you. Dad, she hasn't showed up yet. I started, so I said, call around. She found Tina. Tina was at the goddamn, the, 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 the crackhead boyfriend's house <clears throat> with him and had the boys there. Jenny says, all right, she's on her way to get me. She goes to get Jenny. She's by herself with the boy's sister. My boys are with that crackhead motherfucker. And I'm 
going, what the fuck? I called her. I said, I cussed Tina out. I said, you goddamn piece of shit. You motherfucking whore. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You'll never see these boys again. These are my boys. I'm raising them. So I told her, and she goes, huh, he's a good man, and you ain't nothing. I'll have them take it away from you. Do it, bitch. Call the FF. Call up now. I'll give you the fucking number. I'll tell you who to fucking talk to. Don't threaten me, you goddamn bitch. Those are your grand boys, and you leave them with a goddamn crackhead motherfucker. Fuck you. You're no grandmother. You are nothing. And all of a sudden, she turns in and she starts telling everybody that I'm threatening her. And, 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 and Michael's a piece of shit because he won't talk to her. And, and the boys are nothing to her. And, and you know, fuck her. It's time that people understand I am not the bad guy in this motherfucking situation. I did everything I could. I got slapped in the face. I got kicked in the balls. I got kicked in the fucking ass. And all I tried to do was keep a family together. She didn't care if they went to a foster home. She didn't care if they went to DJJ. She doesn't care. Only thing she cares about is what she can fucking get. Well, bitch, you get nothing. You deserve nothing. May you rot in fucking hell. I want to come out and open this thing because everybody's asking me about Tina. You'll never see me with Tina again. You'll never see her in a video with me again. And if Michael ever tries to put us in a video, I will walk the fuck away. Oh, yeah, once she burned her bridge with me the second she started telling people that, that I was trying to fuck her life up and I wasn't giving no money when I was... When I was spending over, you know, twelve hundred bucks a month just so she could freaking have food, and I was buying her groceries for her. Michael did everything he could for his mother. Michael then would get up and go and go get her and take her to work. But I wanted this to be told tonight. I wanted everybody to finally hear it one time, and I'm not through with it now. I'm, I'm over the Tina thing now. Y'all all know about the Tina situation. And I, if you don't understand it, then fuck you. If you still think I should be with her, fuck you. And if you don't like it, suck my dick. Was that clear enough, Michael? Yes, it was. It was very good. I got chill them and goddamn shaking them, so I'm still mad about this. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> like, See? honestly... If it's not understood and what Jerber, happened at the end there. Jerber wasn't no goddamn, Jerber wasn't no saint. Jerber had a boyfriend that took a goddamn gun and put it in one of the baby's heads and said, if y'all tell your papa that I did, that I'm threatening y'all, I'll use this gun and blow your fucking brains out. Yeah, I did the boys from Jerber. Yeah. And then what happened? <clears throat> this motherfucker showed up at our house and JC told us about it. What did I do, Dad? Oh, my girl went to the goddamn window. Hit me, motherfucker. The motherfucker pulls a gun out. My girl says, Shoot me, son of a bitch. Shoot me. I fucking so dare you. So I got to open this motherfucker's door with a gun at my face to pull him out of his car, and he speeds the fuck off the property. Hey, I think I remember you so, telling yeah, me about that. Yeah, there was a lot of times that I didn't talk to Jerber either. But Jerber has straightened out. I got to give it to her. But I do have custody of all four of these grandchildren. They live with me. And if she gets her life straightened out and she can prove to me that she's actually going to be the mother, then I'll consider going to court and let her have them back. And you know something else that was Until insulting to me, Dad? Huh? But you know something else that was insulting to me? What's was that? When you got, like, members of her family, which would go unnamed, say, oh, how come you're not doing, doing this for your mom? How come you're not doing that for your mom? Where the fuck were you? Yeah. You know, oh, where was her sister? Where was her niece? Where the fuck were they when I was going broke? When they told her she couldn't move in with them? When our uncle said, oh, she can't move into my trailer? So where the fuck were they then? Don't act like you're fucking concerned about her now. Where the fuck was your concern when I was going broke so she could have somewhere to stay? Really? And you, you were saying all that, but I was giving her money too. 
You were, dude, and you had no business. I was telling you, Dad, don't give your money. You don't need to. I would do it out so that make sure that she was able to live. But those days aren't happening anymore. Tina, Tina ruined it. Tina, you know, I, I don't. I, I really don't want to see anything bad happen to her. I want her to go live her life now. I want to live mine. Her be happy on her, which if she can. But I'm going to be happy. Now here's the question that that came up a couple times in chat, and I'm I'm sure you you probably don't want to even go into detail, understandably, by the whole um, conversation. But the question I've seen a couple times come up is, where is Tina now? Like, is, is she, you know, in a different state? She is. is she places still... I know. We'd have no idea where she's at. Okay. Well, I then... haven't heard from her in God. Yeah, one Three person weeks? said, I hope she's in hell. That's <laughs> what one of the people in the chat said. And she's with that guy. And she's, I'm pretty sure she's still with her goddamn crackhead. So, yeah, she probably is now. That's. <laughs> you know, yeah. and a lot of people saying, is she on drugs? And I saw members of somebody in her family say, no, she's not. Well, first of all, you don't know that. Second of all, if she's not, where the fuck is her money going? Really? Where's her money? Why wouldn't I do her show me? I asked her uh, about a month and a half to show me your arms. When I found out she was with this cracker, she wouldn't even show me your arms. Oh, wow. Uh... Hey, it's her life. Let her live it the way she wants. I have pretty much blocked day. everybody. I have, actually. I've blocked everybody on her side of the family because there's no need for me to have them in my life anymore, dude, because I'll, you know... I don't understand. First of all, how do you take the side of somebody who dumped tea on me? How do you take the side of somebody who burned our house down? How do you take that side? <clears throat> you know, she tried to kill us on two. Tried to kill me on two separate occasions. Fuck off now. That's true. I don't get that. How do you not Maybe lose credibility? <laughs> Maybe one day she'll wake up to smell the goddamn coffee cooking and change her life around. Well, she wants to talk to me again. Like I said, she, if she wants to talk to me again, she's going to have to fucking sincerely apologize. And then I'll give it a couple of months and then talk to her. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a big believer in giving people chances and breaks. But how many chances do you have to give somebody? Before you finally just say, I give up. Now, me, I'm happy. I got my boys. There's a there's a there's love to my life. Uh, I I love getting up in the morning and getting them ready for school. I love them coming home from school. I love helping them with their homework. They get me pissed off now. Oh my god! But you know something? The smile of a child, which will well melt your heart. Especially Jacob, without them teeth. <laughs> oh man, I know, right? He told me the other day. Damn, all I want is my teeth for Christmas, Grandpa. Baba. Yeah, because I only got a couple of things. I know, and he, they've been gone for like, what, three months? <laughs> yeah, dude, something's wrong. you got to take me to a dentist. I'm, I'm making, I've already made the appointment. I'm taking the dentist. I'm taking all four to the, I'm taking all three of them to the eye doctor. <laughs> and things that need to be done are getting done. The boys had a fantastic Christmas. But guess what? Tina wasn't part of it because she didn't want to be part of it. Yeah, I had a whole separate Christmas for them at my house. Me, Dad, and, and Bridget, we we bought some toys, and we bought a bunch of stuff, and they just unwrapped, and they had a good time. And then they had their Christmas over at their mom's house. So their boys had a fantastic Christmas. JC got him a go-kart and a damn pellet gun. As long as you don't shoot me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? But you all know the story to help Tina. I don't know if y'all, how y'all feel about it, but I'm, I, I, it's a closed subject now. But Tina's saga with me is over. You guys wanted to know, that's what happened. She flipped out, dude, and it was bad. Like, it, you know, Dad came to me and talked to me, and I was the one who recommended he get divorced to begin with. I was like, you know, Dad... 
I don't like seeing you put through this shit. We've seen it all of our lives. She burned a house down. She destroyed everything you've owned of your mother's. Leave her. You can't sit through, can't put up with it forever. And what Michael didn't tell y'all is that she blamed him for our divorce. Yeah, she blamed me because I started angry grandpa. Are right. you serious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. He planned that he planned to get us divorced. Yeah, it was my <laughs> like plan. That was the plan all when, along. When like I said, she pulled a bag that was already packed. Like she already packed the bag and was ready to go. So like she already had a plan from the get go then. Yeah, like she why still would they to argue? Say what? She still trying to move to New York. Yeah, I know. She's uh she tries it. She she just straight up came up and asked Kim the other day. She was like, "Hey, uh, you think I can just move in with you?" That's been her plan all along, dude. Is it trying like, to move to New York? She, she wanted me to right before she divorced Dad or she and Dad got divorced. She wanted me to write a will for her. You remember this, Dad? Yeah. She ty- she wrote something that wanted me to type up a will, and in her will, everything that she would own, which was nothing, was getting left to uh, our sister Kim, and. Her ashes were to be scattered within the first snow of winter in New York. <laughs> like, first of all, how insulting for me to be typing up the will that says I get nothing when you die. You know, I can't even see your ashes. We gotta ship you off to New York. That's you gotta pay for that too. Yeah, you know, of course I'd have to pay for it. I had to pay for it to get cremated and then ship it over. So she wanted you to yep. do all of it and you get nothing at the same time. And she had but what's really sad, you know, like her family's blaming me and everything, but never, never, I got four kids, and only one talks to her. Wow. Yeah. The other That's three are just older. The other three are just yeah. completely just older. They can only put up with with so much. That's fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> holy crap. Like, even people in the chat are even caught off guard. Like, like literally, the chat was going crazy until, like, details started coming out, and, like, the chat just almost came to a stop. <laughs> like, people were were uh, completely caught off guard with, like, the, the, whole, the whole situation. And that, you know, the whole you know, even one of those things on the house, like, like that's, that's crazy. A lot of the stuff I didn't want Dad to tell. Like, I didn't want him to say she dumped tea on me. I didn't want him to say she – we talked about it today. And he said he was going to yeah. say it, so I didn't argue with him. I was going to be like, oh, Dad, don't say this, don't say that. But what's the point? You know, he's going to say it anyway, and it's true, you know? Well, and, and so even, like, you know, at the same time, if, if she's trying to, you know, defame, as they call it, his character, you know, I mean, <laughs> there's not really any other point. <laughs> How can my character be defamed anymore? <laughs> like she, you know, she said, she'll tell you, There's two things that she'll tell you about the house fire and the tea incident. Now, the house okay. fire, she'll tell you today that it was an accident. Though they told you it was electrical, but she told yeah. me when yep. we went to Kmart one day. When I was at, I, I came home and I told Dad because I was so shocked by this. We lived in Gaston. This was about. 2000 or 99 or 2000 I believe and we go to Kmart and she tells me that she wanted dad to move back to Charleston so she took a piece of cardboard lit it on fire and threw it in the bedroom where we were sleeping what that's fucked that, up now she, just to get you to move back me. to a city yeah well, she hated Columbia because that's where dad's family she wanted to be home in Charleston with her own mother that's fucked up, dude. So she put like everybody's everybody's life in danger because she wanted to move. Yeah, like I said, Dad took right. us outside and threw us out of the house to safety while she was sitting in, across the street watching the house burn. Yeah, now that's so. A there's a very good chance person. that like you or any of your other brothers and or sisters could not even even be here right now if if, if it wasn't well, you know for <laughs> yeah, your dad, dad doing for sure. it. That's why I'll always choose Dad. Always. That that is like well, <laughs> and, and wow. she never took the kids side. And if somebody would come to her and say that our kids did something, she would all back and start beating on the kids, saying, "Why did you do that?" You know, and Dad, and I'm like, like hey, you come over to the house. 
Yeah, then someone would come over, your kids did this, she would jump on our ass, while Dad was like, hey, get the fuck out of our yard. She never defended us. She never had our backs on anything. Dad was always the parent that was like, hey, wait a minute, don't put nothing on my fucking kid, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was always a thing with her. <clears throat> now here's a question. At what point, you know, because of course, you know, the hardcore Angry Grandpa fans, I'm sure everybody's seen, you know, has seen even the videos from early on, you know what I mean? At what point did, did you actually, like, realize or even think, like, you know, yeah, you know, we're going to have to get a divorce at this point. It's just not going to work out. You know, like, I I wish I could say what, what video. <laughs> but, I can I mean, tell you what video, dude. Point, I know no, the I video. I right, what video was when, when I knew the damn divorce was, going to be, was coming was when DSS looked at me and said, she can no longer be around the kids. See, and I'll tell you when it really happened. Out. What okay. really ha- when it really happened was a month before Christmas Tree Video Three. That's when yeah. I knew it right then. When at the end of the video, when Dad, you you saw how hard Dad went out of his way to please her with that tree. If you've seen the video, you seen the video, Isaac. Is that the one where she it's, was like sitting on the couch and she just didn't seem like she gave a shit? Yeah. See. Okay. And that's the one the, the, where somebody hacked the video, the video, and they sent like a hundred million views, and I had to write YouTube, and it was a big thing. The third yeah, I video, that. the third video, um, in the series, Dad, you know, she was bitching because the tree, it was a, she didn't like the tree, and it was leaning, and it didn't come with a stand. So, Dad goes to, uh, we go to, uh, what was that place called, Maxway, and we got a stand. Yep. And it, and it didn't work for her. And it still he wasn't was good enough. And so Dad goes to Walmart, and he gets another tree stand. And he goes to set it up. Oh, the motherfucker won't quit laughing. And so Dad picks up the tree and throws it. And she goes, now, there's a part I cut out of the video where, if you see the end of it, she's outside with this baby stroller going, rawr, 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 slamming this baby stroller on the ground. And yeah. I stop recording, and I go, Mom, <clears throat> what the fuck are you doing? And she takes this baby stroller and slams it against the trailer and looks at me and she starts she starts fucking slipping out, dude. And Ryan was like, "Okay, something not good is coming. I know it." Because she was like, "Oh, I don't want to be with his sad fucking ass no more." And a month later, they got divorced. She found a way to make it happen, and it happened. So, and you know, it's it's over. As you know, and like I say, this is the last time I'm really ever going to talk about it. But I just felt like nobody really knew the story. Everybody just knows what they see on videos. And they're pegging me as some kind of a bad dude for Tina. And it's not true. And I just had a couple of people write me, and they, they said I didn't finish the story about the tea. So basically what happened, Mom was, bo- we, you know, we boil our tea in a pot. I don't know if that's everywhere. I don't know how it works. But you get a big school. pot, you put, you put six <laughs> tea bags in the pot. You boil it. You pour the tea in the pitcher and water. Well, I was standing next to her while she did her tea. I, I don't, I don't really remember this. I was a child, you know. I don't remember this. But apparently, when she, she, as she calls it, she lifts up the pot, and as she goes to move, the handle of it uh, makes like it wasn't attached to the pot, and the pot tips over, and the tea landed on me, and it would just come off the stove, tea, and so. Uh, uh, it, you know, for that to be possible, you know, it would have to just straight tip upside down completely because it has to take a second for all that tea to pour out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't just tip a little bit and all of it comes out at once. It comes out a little bit at a time, which means a little bit would have hit where she would have had enough time to recover and move her arm or whatever the case may be, which means she dumps tea on me. And I had to go to the hospital. I was in the hospital for weeks. I still have a a scar at the bottom of my gigantic stomach. I had to say that because I knew people were going to say something. <laughs> but I have a scar at the bottom of my stomach where they had to perform surgery. That's luckily that's the only thing left is a scar. When 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 she stole that uh, thing out of Win Dixie and they put her in jail. The next morning I went to bail her out. She was walking home, and I told her to get in the car. She blamed me and cussed me. You motherfucker, I'm in jail because of you. I'm going, I ain't the one that stole nothing. I went even with you. 
Yeah, and then she came home and started cutting her hair off with a razor. Oh, I'm going to look like a butch lesbian. I might as well do it right. Yeah, shave her fucking head. Hell, she shaved her head not too long ago again. Or what about the time after you guys got divorced, she burned a freaking cross into her arm? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Into her arm? She did a lot of self-mutilation. No, I'm sure this is the obvious question. Goddamn. Like, is she diagnosed with anything, or she was diagnosed with uh, with multiple? Okay, well, it kind of makes sense then. You would talk to Tina, and it'd be like, she would be like, "Hey, how you doing? Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Turn around. And, what the fuck you doing here? Get out of my house." So she was like, uh, "What's it called? Uh, bipolar." Uh, I, I guess, uh, is that the word, bipolar? She like had bipolar, too. She had bipolar, yeah. multiples, and it was something else. I have an example for you guys, see if you remember this. Uh, this was close to the time, too. This was a little bit before the uh, Christmas tree video. Um, we were mailing Kim some stuff for Christmas. You remember this? Uh, yeah. We, we had a package sitting in the living room we were going to mail off to Kim. It's probably in a couple of videos you see a box. Back in those days, you see a box just leaned against the wall. You know, we were gonna mail some stuff out, and uh, it was like a week and a half, maybe two weeks before Christmas, and we hadn't shipped it yet because we were going to, we were gonna overnight it. You know, we were gonna get a UPS label, we were gonna overnight it, but we had some more stuff to get. Like I got Lily some, you know, <laughs> or my sister's daughter. I got her some books and some teddy bears and some DVDs for her and a couple of Blu-rays and shit like that. And I was gonna send it to her. And mom comes in smiling. She's looking at, hey, how you guys doing? Sees the package and just flips to a new person. I thought you were going to mail this motherfucker. He grabs some stuff, slams the door so hard, the glass inside of it broke. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you take a look in that area, era, you'll see the door window change in one of the videos. She slammed it so hard, she shattered the glass, gets into her car, speeds off, comes back three hours later. She had apparently mailed off her, uh, her couple of little things by herself used her, her whatever money she had left in her bank account, dad's bank account, to ship it off, mailed it, and then just drove around and do it over the fuck she did for like two hours because she was so pissed. Wow. And, of course, we had our pit, our kit mailed out to Kim, and she got it before Christmas. She flipped out for no reason. <clears throat> yeah, and and there are people, you know, sending messages, and um, I got to it a couple times on the chat, too. <laughs> People are asking, like, well, why wasn't any of this in the videos? Well, you have to understand, I mean, you, you can't put everything in the video, you know what I mean? Sometimes there I are... just don't have the camera running, you know? And, you know, a couple, yeah, little bit yeah, of stuff exactly. I did film. Well, some of the stuff you know, I did film, and I chose not to use them. Like, you know what? Like, I remember the video where she flips out and ran outside. Dad and I were making a Christmas cooking video. You remember that, Dad? Yeah, Dad was yeah making, I remember. Dad was making these, like... I don't remember what it was, some sort of, like, reindeer thing. It was, like, with sausage and biscuits and, and like, so I can't remember. But we fucking, we were filming it, and I was like, oh, oh Merry Christmas, all this shit. He was cooking it, and she flipped out. <clears throat> I had it all on film, and I was like, you know what, Dad, I'm not going to use it. You know, I just don't feel like, I don't want to put that up. And he said, like, yes, I agree with you. So we didn't use it. So a lot of the stuff I did film, you know, because I do have the camera running pretty much all the time now. And exactly. then, you know, but... I just didn't use it because some of the stuff I consider too personal, you know. Yeah, like you can put everything, like like because people are, are are questioning, like, well, well, I didn't see that in the video. Not everything's in the video. Like there there are some stuff that I'm sure he he recorded and probably was like, I I can't put this in the video, you know, like because there there there's some stuff that you got to keep private, you know what I mean? You can't put you got to, yeah. everything in the public eye, you know. There there's some stuff that just needs to be kept private, and you know, obviously it can't at this point, but it had to. You know, because, um, you know, at this you point... You know, this story it, you're hearing now, the story. this story would have never been told had she not left the kids alone with that drug addict. Yeah, it was, y'all did it with the internet. Yeah, but and... But because of her choice... And people have to do parts of the story, too. You know, like, people are drawing their own conclusions of what happened in the divorce. And I, I have seen comments on, on Facebook posts of, like, you know, yeah, they got a divorce because angry grandpa was always beating her. <laughs> it's like, that's not, not what happened. Hey, <laughs> you know, I saw I mean, like, some comments that said that. 
like I saw some comments people were making fake videos and stuff. Oh, like like I remember some people were putting out videos with like fake emails from this person and said this, which is bullshit. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh yeah, uh, they told me Tina wanted to, you know, Tina wanted to leave the videos, so they made a fake divorce. It's very fucking real. She's changed <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> I wish I wish that you know it were some if that was the case. I wish mom and dad were still together today, but I know how crazy she is. I know it can't be. Dad, get a divorce. They're trying to go viral. So fucking bad that every two weeks somebody deals us. They know me by name now. Every every two or three weeks DSS comes to my fucking house. Which which I'm sure is a pain in the ass <laughs> because yeah because. Once they yeah. get here and they see what's going on, they they say it's unfounded. Now I'm on a, I'm on a list of people calling DSS, but a lot most of the calls were coming from Tina. Yeah, which which I actually even it, it's it's one thing you know to to have a vendetta or something against you know uh, an adult in your family. You know what I mean, but when you bring the kids into the situation. You know that that's where you really see what type of person somebody is. And it, I mean, like that's 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 where you you really start to hate somebody. You know what I mean? Like the, it, even if you once you know thought of that person as a loved one or, or whatever it is, when they start bringing in you know your kids, I mean, like that's it, it, at least for me, that's where the line is drawn. <laughs> like I just, well, let me let me tell you the new one. I don't know if Michael even knows this yet. Okay. Did you know she's telling people now that we're trying to get. Our old, my oldest grandson to say that she's trying to molest him. Oh shit! And I what, what, what see about that. Is it, sir? Papa, just Papa. Nana's crazy. What purpose does it serve to lie like that? It serves no purpose. Like I don't even understand it. Yeah. What what breeds that kind of lie? In the first place. She's not alone with them at nighttime. So how could that be? She's never alone with them. So that makes wow. that shot in the ass right there. <clears throat> She's doing it trying to get attention. That's all. Trying to make God. people be, oh, woe is Tina. Oh, woe is Tina. Yeah. Charlie's fucking over her. Yeah, which for, for a while people actually were, you know, were believing. I mean, now people see... That there are two sides of every story, you know what I mean? But and people are shocked. <laughs> I mean, you, like the chat right now, people are shocked. People are saying, "Well, one person said, and, and maybe Michael can verify this. I, di I didn't notice this. Someone said in that Christmas video that Michael was talking about, at 36 seconds, someone said that. that they seen her take the piece of the tree that would have made it stand up straight, and they just like she took it and gave like some evil smirk or something at him at 36 seconds." I, I didn't even realize that until this person just said it. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. But like I say, I, I'm not out to, to hurt her. I'm not out to get her any. And number one, I people people saying prank her. Number one, she has no phone. Number two, where, where she works at. She, huh? <laughs> I'd say, where there goes that idea. <laughs> But that that makes that makes no sense. That just goes story up even more, you know? Yeah. yeah I would definitely. I would rather just not talk to her or let her hear my voice. The best thing now is is just everybody forget about Tina. Move on. Mom doesn't know where I live or my phone number, and I did it for a reason. When I moved, I didn't tell her where I was moving because I don't want her to know. Yeah, for people wondering, obviously, there's a new Tina in the picture, obviously, so. You know, forget about the old Tina. Fuck you, Isaac. <laughs> Fuck you, Isaac. Fuck you, Isaac. I'm not dealing hey, with any more Tinas. Hey, you're I got something we can talk team. about today, Dad. <laughs> hey, Dad, you want to talk about what happened today? Fuck you, Michael. You know what you can do with that goddamn... I ain't making you no more lasagna. <laughs> so, hey, hey, hey that's a hell of a big deal right there. Now, oh, no, no, I, I don't like Dabble Bunny anyway, because he doesn't use ricotta cheese. He uses a frickin' cottage cheese. <laughs> Fuck your lasagna, you don't use ricotta. Hey, cottage cheese is good! <laughs> yeah, but for lasagna? <laughs> yeah! Cottage cheese for lasagna? I, I mean, it could, well, hmm. 
I don't know. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Dad looked at it and goes, oh, it's white cheese. This will work. <laughs> it's a white liquid cheese. This is what I needed. And it turned out I hate you, Michael. I hate you, Michael. <laughs> so anyway, today, we started filming a video today, and it was going to be called uh, Poor Man's Lasagna. That was the title for the video. And okay. very shortly, Poor Man's off. Lasagna turned into the first rage of 2014. <laughs> so... Dad, Shut up, Michael. Dad is making this lasagna. First of all, I brought I made the mistake of bringing Barilla uh, pasta sheets for the noodles. And oh shit, that's things, a bad idea. Those things got destroyed within like thirty seconds of filming. Like he just fucking took it and beat I it against the counter. The video, right? the video. I want to just get them hype about it, Dad. I want them to tell them what happened. Oh okay. I mean, Do I'm you not going to see the video. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> So basically, in, in a nutshell, the cheese was opened. Who opened it? Find out on video. The cheese was opened. It was old looking. Dad slips out and thus making the biggest mess I've seen that kitchen have in a long time. No, ever, period. Oh, I see that it. is the worst. That was the worst. I, was I think, the one, I think we missed the syrup and flour fight. Dude, this is took like almost an hour fight. to clean. Look here. <laughs> this, this, this place got so nasty. Uh, uh, oh, my God. Hazmat had a good fit in clean. A, a red dog doesn't like a better. <laughs> Let's just say there's a section of the video where Dad is crawling, slipping, and fucking lasagna sauce on the floor, and he can't get up. <laughs> and you wouldn't help me. <laughs> yeah, Michael's sitting there recording while you're, like, slipping inside. <laughs> <laughs> Who made me clean that whole motherfucker by myself? Don't you lie. I filmed me helping you. I made a whole video of us cleaning the house. Yeah, with a goddamn I... camera in one hand. <laughs> well, people have always wondered what it's like to clean up a mess after you rage. I wanted them to see for once. <laughs> I mean, two hours? It took a while. It took two hours. hours we were done. That good. If this happened to me afternoon, and by the time we were done cleaning, it was starting to get dark. What, what do you mean, we? You got a mouse in your fucking pocket? <laughs> I was filmed. I was helping. I filmed me helping. Uh, you need to go feed that mouse some of that cheese, man, because you sure ain't helped me. Now, here's a quick question. There's and you actually... can stop me, Michael. You can stop me from doing all that. <laughs> no, that's not true. I could not have stopped you. Thank God for video proof. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's coming up tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. I'm thinking about calling it uh, Poor Man's Lasagna, call, uh, comma, the first rage of 2014. I really don't know. 2014 freak out. You know, I, I really it was don't a know what I'm calling it. Rage of 2014. <laughs> I think it's going to be the biggest rage. It's the biggest rage I've ever had, okay? <laughs> now, should we take it's some callers? Because... I- because I see that, yeah, let's put, that let's a lot of people some have some questions. There, there are people dying to, <laughs> to get on the air and ask some questions. So we'll take some callers. Um, just as a, as a forewarning, don't do nothing stupid. Don't say nothing stupid. Trust me, my fingers are quick. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> my tongue is sharp. 